Hello, it's Wednesday, December 8th. Welcome to the morning tarot message. I've been having some uh, downloads, if you will, or like synchronicities. There's been a lot of, um, of the number eight showing up. Um, today is the eighth, so that's kind of important. Um, today is an important day for me. Um, regardless, I guess, I, yeah, I'll share, I'll share. Um, today's my dad's birthday, or what would have been my dad's birthday. He passed eight years ago, okay? So eight, eight. Um, eight is also the infinity symbol, which is actually called a lemniscuit. I loved learning that this year, the word for the infinity symbol, lemniscuit. Is it going to show up here? Uh, not on any of these cards anyway that I'm just pulling. But you know what it looks like. It's a little... Okay, that's an eight. Eight is the number of transformation, of change. Um, I've been really into my um, meditation practice, and uh, what helps with that is, is getting into my body. So I've been in boot camp for the last month, and I renewed through December. So I'm, I'm like six weeks now into some pretty intense uh, physical activity, which really just um, helps me oscillate then even further into the other side, you know, um, or my mind some spirituality there, <clears throat> trying to break some habits and um, that are sort of clouding this sense, this intuition. But um, last night came, came out pretty loud and clear. Actually, my dad was in my dream last night and it was like we were cleaning his apartment, like for his soul to come live in his space, in this space for us to go visit him or something. Like it took him eight years to come back to us or something. December 8th, eight years since this passing. So um, I've got my dream deck because, oh, because dreams. And I just wanna know what, an, what energy is available to us today, what's going on today. I do feel this like sort of, um, I don't wanna say I feel anxious today, but there's a, uh, Ooh, there's like a lot going on beneath the surface. So if you feel this way too, I, I would just say, you know, let's all just take a deep breath. <sighs> let's see where we go. Destruction, lucid, toxic. Forty-six, seventeen, one. Uh huh. So destruction, lucid, toxic. I believe destruction is like the death card. Uh, to me, this says something like understanding that in order to have some sort of new beginning, some sort of there's maybe like everything is temporary here. So if the, so, no, destruction's almost like the tower. It's because uh, destruction can be seen as a negative thing, but it's actually a positive. Um, it's a positive thing because it's it's allowing for cycles to. In, in some way, it, it disallows stagnation by allowing change and transformation. So that's why I thought it was it was death, but it's actually more like the tower card of the tarot. Look how beautiful that is. I'll read a little bit from the book because it's, it's really nice. The Tibetan monks will spend days creating beautiful mandalas with so much love, care, and devotion. Once the mandala is completed, it is then destroyed. This teaches us not to have attachment and to know that all things are temporary and that life and death are natural cycles. Destruction can be seen as a negative thing if you are in fearful state, but it is also liberating if we are stuck in modes that do not allow growth. If you have put your love and devotion into something that has been destroyed, know that a new cycle will soon begin, a cycle that is, in more, that is more in accordance with the path you are meant to be on. 
and it came out in the reversal, which means that a destructive cycle was avoided and can be an affirmation concerning a person or a situation that the right course of action was taken, thereby averting disaster. Uh, and toxic shows up here, so and, and lucid. So um, if this resonates for you as well, this is like you've removed something toxic in your life or you are aware of something toxic in your life and you're taking steps towards uh, removing that, that toxicity. I might just go ahead and pull another card for toxic, but let's just see how it goes. We have Lucid next. <clears throat> lucid dreaming occurs when the dreamer takes control of their dreams, indicates awareness, uh, presence, observation, exploration, and cultivation, like the magician in the tarot. It is an invitation to create your world, to manifest that which you wish to have occur, a card of empowerment and action. So this, this a lot to me screams, uh, be careful about where, where your energy is flowing right now. If this is a powerful time for manifestation. Do not be having negative thoughts. Do not be having toxic thoughts. Be aware of, your, of, of the toxic elements in your, in your life right now. I'm gonna go ahead and read toxic now. I love the, by the way, here's the lucid card. I mean, the artwork on this is just stunning. This is the, what I, I mean, I just call it the dream deck, but it's actually called, um, oh, it's in my hand, the Viator Somnarium, Somnarium. Oy, oy, oy. Um, and this was one of my first Oracle decks that I've ever bought, and it's amazing. So that was Lucid Toxic. Are you attracted to, eee? The poison or the flower? The sweetest flower carries the deadliest poison. This card can identify a person or situation which drains or pollutes your energy, a harmful emotional, psychic, or physical pattern, particularly something that which, that which appears alluring or beautiful, but in fact is potentially ruinous over time. What are you drawn to that drains and hurts you? Ask yourself, are you drawn to the flower or to the poison? cards surrounding the toxic card will help you hone in on the toxic element. An example of this would be if the toxic card is next to dream lovers, this would indicate that a romantic relationship is toxic. Note the surrounding cards or pull more cards for further clarification. So the card next to toxic was lucid. It tells me that this is coming from within. This is coming from sort of, it's almost like you're in your own way of manifesting a destruct, but because destruction here is in reverse, there is some pattern that's been broken. There is, um, something has been avoided by removing this toxic, this toxicity from your life through your, I'll say, loving awareness. It is something you've been aware of for a long time, something you've known you've had to uh, remove yourself from in order to start this new cycle. Does that make sense? I'll pull one more clarification on toxic. The elements, yeah. So the, the elements is all about um, balancing our elements, like making sure we have enough of all of, of each of these, of fire, water, air, earth. Um, so in a, in a dream state, this could appear as like a big rainstorm or a snowstorm or a hurricane that would indicate, you know, an excess of emotions or something like that. Um, it's in the reverse. So it's saying to balance out some of your elements here. When the elements are imbalanced in the reading, it means you may be out of your power and deficient in an element you need to strengthen. As you develop and connect with your various strengths and abilities, make sure that nobody is taking your hard-earned energy and victory away. If you give your energy and power away to others, make sure to replenish your energy and give back to yourself. You can help others by being your own good health, by being in your own good health and power. You have the ability to manifest if you harness your power and energy. And again, the manifesting card is here. So what have you manifested recently?
for yourself that was taking your energy out of a toxic situation that was not that you knew was not good for you and now you've sort of like taken things into your own hands this is about taking back your power today by by knowing that something was missing or that you were maybe giving something away that belonged to you Uh, it doesn't have to be like taken away from by another person, but maybe this is like an addiction. Toxic is about can be addictions. Um, it could be, addictions could also be. I mean, toxic could be resisting change, as in wanting to wanting to stay in a certain place. That's that's sort of like a toxic thing because it's a pattern that we're used to. All right, let's see what this has to say. Let's get into the read. I love the Modern Witch Tarot deck, but it's so big. <laughs> it's so hard to shuffle. It's my only, it's my only thing with this deck. Hangman. The Tower, King of Swords, the Magician. Okay, so we have the, the Tower and the Magician of, you know, equivalent in the Dream Deck, and they're showing up here as well. So it feels like, if it feels like you are, if you are showing up as the Tower, some sudden change has come in because you're dealing with a situation of this is too like synchronous actually. You talking about you want to talk about lucidity? The King of Swords is sort of the truth bearer. There is no greater truth besides maybe the Ace of Swords, set in clarity. It's almost like you've been gaslit up until now and you finally see the truth and you're trying to manifest a way towards something healthier. What, what, is a, what does healthy look like for you? How do you move forward with this new truth, with this new idea of, uh-huh, <laughs> how you got here? Not seeing the truth. So this is sort of like self-victimization. This is like keeping yourself stuck, not wanting to see the situation for what it is. Look at all, look at the water down here. It's like she's leaking energy. This is like her emotion, her life force that is leaking because she's not willing to move forward. She's not willing to sort she's like keeping herself blind. This is the toxic situation. This is this is the toxicity. This is not seeing your look, another eight also. This is not seeing your power, not being in your power. Also, um, something to mention about the magician is about the elements. The magician has all the tools they need, and there's the lemniscate, y'all. The eight, the eight, you see it, you see it. I know I'm too close. <laughs> but the magician has all of the elements here. You got the pentacles, the sword, the cup. So what you're not seeing is that you have everything you need. You have all the tools, or maybe this is the challenge to balance out the elements again. I'm showing it in reverse because that's how it came out. The elements in reverse. What are you not seeing that you have, that you might already have, that you're giving away to somebody or to a situation? Look within, Eight of Cups, Knight of, Knight of Pentacles, Ten of Wands. Yeah, so where you're going. This is about going within. This is about another eight. Whoops. 
it's all flipped for me. Eight, eight of cups. This is about going within. This is the solo journey. It's about leaving some sort of painful situation behind in order to get a better insight as to how you really feel about something. Knight of Pentacles, very slow but deliberate action forward. I like to think of the Knight of Pentacles as like our routines, our day to day, you know, sort of like the mundane stuff, but it's so important. It's about being practical and doing the things in order. Do it in order like you're supposed to. Don't take any shortcuts. If you do this, you'll see Ten of Wands, burdens. You'll see that there's like a lot that you're actually doing. First of all, give yourself the credit for doing this work. If you are doing it, congratulations. But then um, it's okay to also let some things go. Not everything needs to fall on you. If you're taking on other people's burdens, that's a form of toxicity. That's a form of giving your power away. So the hanged one is what's showing up underneath. It's time to take a step back and um, get a new perspective on all that's going on in your life, whatever situation you're currently dealing with. The hanged one is about enlightenment. There is a certain comfort in um, understanding and, and knowingly taking a step back, no longer trying to be everything to everybody, but now all of a sudden um, realizing that something needs to change or that something is changing. And so instead of trying to keep up <laughs> with this tower, with this, this crumbling tower, I, I like to imagine the tower as a sand castle because the, the tide will come and it'll wash it away. And if you try to like put your hands on it and uh, keep it upright, it'll just fall through your fingers anyway. So what are you doing wasting your energy trying to save this tower? The, the, the tide will not wash the whole beach away. Like you will still have the, the foundation, right? Our foundation will never disappear. It will appear as though it's falling out from, you know, the bottom is falling out. That's how it feels. That's like the feeling of the tower where it's like all of a sudden we don't know where we're going or what's happening. In this case, it does feel like a sudden truth. And then realizing you've been blind this whole time to like what this truth of the situation actually is. And now there is a need to sort of reevaluate and, and take some concrete steps forward to try and make things easier for yourself. And that starts by taking a step back from the situation and simply going within. This is some very, this is a very personal journey. Whoa. Nope, I don't want these yet. Come on. Let's get some advice on, on what to do moving forward. Oh. Emperor. Aries, that's taking charge, starting something new, taking charge, five of wands. It's a struggle. <laughs> yeah, it might be difficult to move forward in this new direction, because you're like, what is this? What is it? What is this new thing? That's a struggle. Seven of cups, confusion. Yeah, you don't know which, what to do, where to go. It also indicates you have choices. So, I mean, there's that. And five of pentacles. Hmm. I feel like there's, there's Aquarius and there's Aries here. Hmm. Five of pentacles, the need to want to move forward. You're not the only one who wants to move who wants to move on. So maybe this is about finding other people who, finding somebody who feels the same way you do, who wants to move on, who wants to get clarity about what they should do next. Mm, this might be a time to go ask for some help. Uh, 
Um, there's, a, there's fives here, five, five. So this is a very uncomfortable situation. This is like not wanting to take charge, but not really knowing how and also not feeling ready. Uh, clarify the hanged one. Ace of Swords. Discovering the truth. This is about this is about before taking charge. It's about learning everything you can about the situation. Ace of Swords did show up. It did show up. Uh, please clarify. Um, let's see the tower. Let's see if there, what, it, what more it can say about that. The star. Uh huh. This tower needed to happen so that you could heal. This is. A, it was necessary for your own your own growth and healing. Eight of Swords. Strength. Um, how you got here, strength. So th this is showing that you, you think that you were being brave or, or strong by keeping yourself in this comfortable s situation of like, I don't wanna know, I don't wanna know, um, or giving your power away. You were s staying in this sort of like comfortable but not comfortable state, like you know where you were. You, you know where you have been. Um, by choosing not to see the situation for what it was. And now to get out of that, that is finally getting vulnerable. To get out of that state, you're, you're becoming vulnerable so that you can not let your energy be wasted. I like, love this puddle underneath her. <laughs> um, don't waste that, don't waste that emotion and, 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 um, deny yourself the truth, um, but it takes a lot of strength and courage to get out of this Eight of Swords mentality. The truth is very powerful here. It's like, it's triggering everything. It's triggering the healing, it's triggering sudden clarity, the desire for manifestation, for change. Uh, clarify the um, King of Swords then. Ace of Wands, inspiration, like I said. Um, what else can we clarify? Um, let's go with this row here, the Eight of Cups. The Eight of Cups, what is this inner journey? Uh-huh, it's about finding bravery to address feelings of, um, I mean, this card is like heartbreak and betrayal. But I'll just say like, this is about addressing an extremely painful situation from the past. But this card also, just like the strength card in some ways, the strength, you know, like the courageous lion and like the wizard of Oz. Both of these cards to me are about having, about being brave, finding courage but being vulnerable. It's funny how strength comes from vulnerability. That's when we, are, when we are compassionate and kind for ourselves in the face of fear, that is bravery. Bravery isn't ego or confidence, like blind confidence <coughs> and, uh, and, and the ego that we typically think of as like a negative egoism. There's positive egoism where we are um, self-confident and self-aware about you know where our strengths are and and just how to be <laughs> compassionate human beings towards ourselves and others but there's the negative egoism here that is that's not that's not what's showing up but I just I, what I mean to say is that understand that there are two and if you don't yet understand that there are two egos two forms of egoism um, then that is a lack of self-awareness so Anyway, this inner journey is about finding, finding that bravery and being able to be vulnerable, but stand in your strength at the same time. Knight of Pentacles. 
the hermit. Virgo. <laughs> Who is doing this work if not the Virgos? Right? Um, there is a, I've, I've seen this in a lot of other tarot readers' um, uh, readings as well. Like on YouTube, I watch a lot of videos. Virgo is heavy right now. What are you doing in a very practical sense to, uh, to improve your situation? There, there is a level of like, let's be practical here. This might be a very painful and emotional transit with a lot of ahas. Uh, but this is not yet the time to really How do I say this? Like, take charge without being without being in control. This is all about feeling your way and, and taking practical steps towards sort of a release, like liberation. But then Aries shows up here, which is take charge. So it's not about control. It's about uh, maybe it's about more um, faith in, in in your journey. Let's clarify Ten of Wands. Queen of Pentacles. Yeah. Maybe you've been doing like way too much stuff to try to feel like the Queen of Pentacles here, which is like this nurturing, this creature comforts nurturing uh, person. You want to be everything for everybody, but that's just not how it works. If you are draining your energy on other people, you are not really grow you're not doing everything you can to grow as a person. It is time to take a step back and learn what is for you and don't do everything for everybody else. Uh, Aries, or sorry, the emperor, Let's clarify the emperor. The devil, ah! Take charge of that which binds us. So this is about getting free. Free yourself. What binds you? You're bound to, you were, you were binding yourself to this perspective of, of self-victimization. Some sort of message here about not seeing the truth and being comfortable with that. I'm comfortable in this discomfort. I know it's not good for me. I know it's toxic, but I'm just going to stay here. It's time to break away from that with truth and clarity and inspiration. Uh, five of wands, please. Three of cups. Seven of cups, please. Ten of swords. And the five of pentacles. Two of Pentacles. So there is sort of like some transmuting happening, some like alchemical, if you will, because the five of wands is sort of turning into the three of cups, seven of cups, 10 of swords, into the five of pentacles, and then the two of pentacles. There is a choice here about whether or not this reading is ending with a choice, some sort of choice about, you know, wanting to, there's, there's also the Ten of Swords. So I, what I see here is that there's this desire to be in community, um, sharing yourself authentically with others, but sort of feeling confused about how to do that without, how to move forward. Um, in a, simply allowing this destructive, you know, this cycle to end. The Ten of Swords is like um, 
a destructive cycle is ending. So there's an affirmation there for somebody that something is over, like some, something from the past is over. You're no longer, you no longer have to be in this Eight of Swords energy unless you choose to be. So some, somebody might not know how to behave here. <laughs> this is what I'm getting. Somebody might not know how to behave post cycle. There's like lingering feelings of confusion. That's why I feel so confused right now into this. There's, there's confusion and also like feeling left out in the cold as in how do, you know, how do you transmute this into something new? The five of pentacles is an affirmation also that other people do want to move on too. That's why, that's why, and then, and then the three of cups. What brings you joy and brings others joy as well? Like how do you get, um, I don't know if this is the same situation or a new situation, but if you have been giving your power away by some toxic pattern, by allowing something toxic to um, replay itself because of a lack of truth and a lack of clarity, I see that here. There's the confusion. There's the feeling like left out in the cold. There is a desire for celebration whoops there i think that there's every reason to want to celebrate this connection there there's a there's a want and a need to celebrate other aspects of this of this situation but um not until you get clear on um i think uh, you have to get clear on what it is that you want, like what your true feelings are and what you want um, out of the situation because look, there's choice, there's struggle. It's like struggling to make a decision because of all of this history, this baggage. This is the baggage right there. This is what we want, the Queen of Pentacles. So. If you've been, um, if you would self-prescribe yourself, self-describe yourself as a uh, people pleaser, this sort of feels like that, where it's like you've been um, doing things for, I don't want to say the wrong reasons, but like you're giving your power away anytime you make a decision for, towards someone else's growth and healing before even looking at yourself. It's, this is avoidant behavior, I think, for, for you to... Um, when we avoid doing the work by distracting ourselves. So um, remove toxic elements, toxic habits. I mean, social media, scrolling, internet, um, entertainment. Um, also, the details of other people's lives we distract ourselves with instead of looking at ourselves first. That is the message here. And so the tower that, that you showed up as um, might just be indicating something that happened in the recent past that finally shook you awake. Um, and if that's true for you, then, then the takeaway here is um, it's time to sort of get quiet um, so that you can find your center, find, find the truth that you've been avoiding, figure out which, what is the missing piece here for you to step out of this confusion and, and to actually be, li be living in the truth that exists. Welcome. And now I'm blowing out because we went all natural today with the lighting. Wow, these readings are getting longer, but I hope you stuck with it. Thank you if you did. Um, have a great Wednesday and see you tomorrow.